Hello, uh, I'm Teddy Larkin. I'm a freshman at Emory. And I'm Nate Cosby, and I'm a junior. And we did the negative effects of sleep deprivation. So first of all, we're going to start with a question. So what um, of these following disasters, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, the Exxon Valdez explosion, and the Space Shuttle Challenger explosion, what do you think all of these had in common? Anyway. Well, all four of these can be tied to issues by individuals having sleep deprivation. Now, um, so basically sleep deprivation is the removal of something that's present in your life that has a negative effect on your mental and physical well-being. And so that's the definition of deprivation, taking sleep away from your body, something that's essential just like food is essential, just like shelter is essential, oxygen is essential, taking sleep away from your body has negative mental and physical effects. Um, so how does this relate to you? During college, I mean, as the last presentation just spoke about, a lot of people have irregular sleep schedules. You sleep a lot during the weekend, or you, you stay up all weekend, you can have regular sleep during the school days and have it change. Um, only 30% of college students say that they get the recommended eight hours of sleep. Um, Emory students as a whole are under a lot of stress, probably more stress than a lot of other college students. Um, and there's all sorts of distractions from sleep. You could have a loud roommate, you could miss your parents. It's a new environment for sleeping. This is definitely something that's very relevant to Emory students. So, what causes sleep deprivation? Um, I, of all people, know I have been training with the soccer team, I'm involved with the fraternity, I'm involved in social, and also um, I go and I do service other places. I'm sure many other Emory students are involved everywhere and would like to be. Um, poor, it, when you have so much on your plate, it can lead to poor time management. You run out of time, so you start to cram, and when you cram, it leads to stress. Now, stress does not lead to medical illness, not directly, but stress and um, medical illness uh, can all can be can all come from having a lack of sleep. Uh, also, additionally, sleep disorders can be have been shown to be formed from having too much stress, or also once one becomes sick from lack of sleep, you can tend to also fall into sleep disorders. Um, some facts and figures are that about 60% of college students have disturbed sleep patterns. So when 30% of college students aren't getting enough sleep every night and 60% of students have disturbed sleep patterns, we know it's a serious issue. Um, also, additionally, more than 50% of college students use some sort, sort of drug, alcohol, uh, energy drink, just as um, Leo just talked about um, about 20% of students pull an all-nighter once a month, and 35% of students stay up until 3 a.m. once a week, and only about 11% of students will consider themselves to have had a full, well, um, complete night's sleep. Uh, and this is a list of some of the symptoms of sleep deprivation. Uh, the beginning ones are pretty much about the heart and your immune system. The rest are some of the smaller on the side ones that you can see at a secondary stage. Um, so one of the other things that sleep deprivation really affects is your memory. And so how memory works is you absorb knowledge through um, a process called acquisition. Uh, you consolidate your memory so you can kind of organize them, organize them in a way, make your memories more stable. And then the last stage is the recall stage, where you take that information that you previously learned and apply that to situation. And so what sleep does is it impair, sleep deprivation impairs all three of these. It also, sleep is important because it erases the memories that you don't necessarily need. And so memories that haven't been recalled recently will be erased, like your short-term memory will be erased. And so not having enough sleep really affects your acquisition of memories, but also keeps you from getting rid of the old memories, and so your brain is kind of focused on the old things instead of the new things that you're learning. And one of the studies that I found um, from Berkeley is that you need about one hour of sleep for every hour of studying. So if you spend eight hours studying for a test and you only get six hours of sleep that night, you're only getting about six hours of study. Um, yeah, so I mean, I just talked about this, but 
basically what happens is every one of your memories is a neural neuron connection that's formed in your brain and so not getting enough sleep um, really affects these connections they could have faulty connections they aren't quite as strong and so sleep really fortifies these connections in your brain um, this is another study that I found from Columbia they took the grade point average of every freshman student and um, compared that to how much sleep they were getting. I mean, it's very basic. It just shows that basically as you get more sleep throughout the night, um, or throughout the week, the more sleep that you get, the higher your GPA is. So that's just a very simple way to see that. All right. So some of the psychological effects that can be seen from lack of sleep um, are irritability. You can be upset all the time, not in a great mood. You can have poor concentration <coughs> when you go on school. You can be aggressive. You can be apathetic. You can sometimes not even be sure what time it is or where you are. You can lose emotional control and you can become paranoid. Uh, some of the solutions to all these negative effects are, first of all, naps. Naps can be positive and negative towards um, your sleep. If you're taking naps at correct times and not right before you go to bed, in the middle of the day, a short nap, then it can be really beneficial to your day. If you're napping around past 6 or 7 p.m. at night, it tends to um, degrade your regular sleep cycle and makes it even harder to fall asleep. Uh, if you maintain a regular sleep schedule, um, even on the weekends, uh, not staying up until um, 3, 4 a.m. on the weekends and then waking up past noon, uh, and if you ec exercise daily, and but not too close to bedtime, additionally, if you work out right before you fall asleep, it can also negatively affect your sleep. You can um, have re relaxing activities right before you go to sleep, maybe read a book, just sit and talk, listen to something nice <coughs> on your earphones, maybe something quiet, soothing. Don't be around a uh, blue light emitting electronic device because um, electronic devices actually, the light can um, affect your melatonin production in your thalamus and therefore make it even harder for you to fall asleep. Um, if you create a sleep friendly environment, go to bed only when you're sleepy, have a good cycle, and make it one of your top priorities, then you can handle your sleep. Um, so just to wrap it up, Emory students, Emory's full of really smart people, great athletes, proven leaders, and in order to perform in this really tough environment, you need to be well rested. And so, two resources that we have, the Emory Sleep Clinic, which is part of the Emory Clinic system, is available if you have um, actual sleep issues, but also the Emory Counseling Center. A lot of times sleep deprivation is caused by other factors, stress, poor economic management. Um, so if that's another resource to maybe get the underlying causes of sleep deprivation. So that's what we have. Thank you.